Hi, I'm Kent. Last time I took all the electrical components off my kiln. This is part of the contactor that was in the kiln sitter. I found on it that it actually has a date code. So this is June 1983, so that's how old the kiln is. Since I torn apart my kiln, I've also made some decisions. I took out the bottom section. My kiln is now much shorter. One of the reasons is the kiln is just huge. I don't need that large of a volume. I will never fill it up and firing it would be just silly. The other reason is related to power. So here there's a specification sheet that actually shows what the kiln requires. So the 1027 actually requires a 60 amp breaker. I don't have that available. I only have a 50 amp breaker. So by shortening the kiln, I can also put it on a circuit that's much less power. So I'm basically going to be turning my 231 into a 23118. So going from 27 inches deep to 18 inches deep, or from a 1027 into a 1018. So one of the things that's different between the 18 and 27 inch versions is it's missing one of the sections, but the bottom element actually swaps out. So in the 27 inch deep version, the two central elements are actually the same. And the very bottom element is actually higher power. It's the same power as the top element. Since I just removed this, this element is actually less power than the original. Right now, I'm just going to run with it that way. Uh, I may, may need to either put this section in place of the middle one or swap out that element. It's also possible that since I'm going to be using a digital controller, it can actually account for this difference and it'll just be okay. We'll have to see how it goes. So when I, when I purchased the kiln, the hinge was broken. It was actually uh, disconnected on one side here, so it wasn't working. When I was looking online for replacement parts, uh, I realized that Scott has actually swapped out their hinges. So I've actually installed that already. So here it connects uh, to the top um, and there's a bracket here that goes all the way down with a little notch. So when you push it up, it catches on this little piece here. One of the other modifications I wanna to make to my kiln is to add some handles. Cause right now these rings are actually very hard to pick up. And the other thing is these latches here are very old and very broken. So I picked up some latches that I can replace. So I'm going to take off these old latches and I'll put on the handles um, and the new latch. Okay, so I'll just eyeball placement of these. They don't need to be very precise. So there's screws here, actually uh, stainless uh, sheet metal screws. So they'll self self drill. Should work great. There are two handles. Next, I'll put on the latch. All right, so there are handles on this side. I'm going to go to the other side and do the exact same thing. So with the drill, I'm screwing through using the using the drill bit that's inside the screw itself that goes through the outer sheet metal and just into the fire brick to secure it. I don't want to screw too much though because it'll actually strip out the sheet metal. This is actually really thin. So here I'm just using a screwdriver to cinch it down the rest of the way. Great, I'll just keep that from moving around. So there's one more modification I need to make to the kiln physically. This here is where the kiln sitter used to go. It's screwed on in the metal box that's on the outside. I want to replace this with a the thermocouple. So I want to remove this. One of the things to note though is the thermocouple itself is much smaller in diameter. So I can put it in here, but I worry that the kiln heat's gonna come through. And since I'm gonna to need to put some electronics on the other side of this, that seems like a bad idea. So off camera, I took a piece of fire brick that I had and I cut it down. So the outside diameter is approximately the size of the old piece. And then I cut out of this groove. Basically, I took a piece of sandpaper, just sanded quite a bit. That will fit in here. Like that. Now the thermocouple. The thermocouple goes in just like that. I can 
put on the thermocouple block on the outside and cut up the wires. I might cement that in, I'm, I might not, I'm not sure yet, but now I don't have to worry about that big air gap. Okay, I think that's it for the physical modifications I need to make to my kiln. Next up, we'll be starting on the electrical modifications. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave a comment below. Thanks.